Shields up, Ironbreakers. We're on here coming at you with another video, and today we're going to be talking about Monster Hunter World. More specifically, we're going to be talking about the Hunting Horn. As with all of my weapon videos, this is intended to give you guys some basic tips on how to get started with this particular weapon, show you guys a couple of interesting moves, and naturally give you a reason as to why you should use this weapon over any other weapon in Monster Hunter World. And in the case of the Hunting Horn, that reason is, how would you like to humiliate the monster you are fighting that's right humiliate them and I know some people are saying you mean you humiliate them by playing with a really weak weapon <laughs> well if you think that the hunting horn is a weak weapon oh man you got another thing coming you're probably one of those people that thinks the hunting horn is a support weapon no 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 listen let me explain to you okay the hunting horn is all about smashing monsters in the face and when they're reeling drooling and just waiting for you to put them out of their, of their misery you sneak up to them and you softly whisper in their ear how would you like me to play you the song of my people and then you start playing bagpipes all over their face to add insult to injury. That is what the hunting horn is all about. And I know some people are going to come in here and start saying, no, the hunting horn is actually about buffing your teammates and it's a support weapon and give us buffs and attack. But listen, the hunting horn is about smashing monsters in the face and adding insult to injury by playing music while you're doing that. But before we get to that part, Let's get to some of the basics, shall we? So this is the hunting horn. And when it comes to figuring out combos and all kinds of fancy moves, sure, you can figure some of them out. But to be completely honest, the only combo that matters when it comes to the hunting horn is the notes that you are playing. Because every single move that you can perform with the hunting horn flows directly into any other single move that you can perform with it. So say, for instance, you want to start hitting a monster by hitting triangle. Okay, here you go. Triangle, infinite combo. And I'm like, okay, let's add some circle on that. Boom, circle, infinite combo. And I'm like, oh, that's nice. Okay, let's let's uh, let's get fancy. Triangle, circle. Oh, look at that. It just combos right into each other. And I'll hit R2 for a nice little performance. Also combos into it. And then plays bagpipes. Holy crap. So pretty much what I wanted to explain to you guys by showing you this particular bit here is that anything that you can do with this weapon will flow naturally into anything else that you can do with this weapon because the whole point is for you to play specific notes to get buffs. That is the whole point of the hunting horn. And therefore, all of the combos flow naturally into one another to allow you to just focus on doing other things like selecting the correct notes. Now, different hunting horns are going to have different notes as well as different buffs. So whenever you equip the hunting horn and you then come out here and you pull out the hunting horn and start hitting stuff with it, you will notice that on the top right hand side, you have the notes. It will tell you which button corresponds to which note, and then it will tell you which notes you have to play in order to get specific buffs. So let's start with a simple one. First of all, each note is white note triangle, red note circle, blue note triangle plus circle. Okay, that is just straight up on the top right hand side, so you should be able to see it just fine. Then next to it, you have the different notes you have to play in order to get each, um, each buff. So, in the case of attack up S, it is basically uh, white note, red note, red note. So that means triangle, circle, circle. So, triangle, circle, circle. And that will give, that will queue up the notes to give you attack up. At which point you then press R2 to perform. And this will give you attack up. In this case, it gave us attack up L because we already got attack up uh, S earlier. So it increased the potency of the buff we already had. And now you have attack up and you can continue to attack the monster as you see fit. But ideally, you want to give more buffs to yourself and your teammates when you are using the hunting horn. So let's look at over there at a health boost. Health boost is red note, blue note, white note. That means circle, triangle, circle, and triangle. So circle triangle circle and triangle and then r2 to perform and we are now doing health boost s and we now increased our health and that is pretty much the way that you can do any buff 
you could possibly want. Now, on top of the buffs that are available to yourself and your party, the Hunting Horn also features a specific buff that is only to you. And usually that buff is performed by doing triangle, triangle. So if we do triangle, and then triangle again, and then perform, we now have deflected attack prevention, which means our attacks will no longer be deflected when you hit the monster. Uh, the first buff that you actually do with self-improvement on this one is faster movement speed for when you are uh, wielding the hunting horn, which is extremely uh, important because, you know, you want to be able to move a lot, especially with this particular weapon because you're going to need to do a lot of dodging. You're going to need to pull a lot of fancy moves to be able to actually play the notes when you need to play the notes. So self-improvement buffs are pretty good. I do believe that with different hunting horns they might have different self-improvement buffs, but we're just focusing on the basics for now, then we will look over different hunting horns and their different buffs. So now you know how to perform basic buffs, and you know how to perform the self-improvement buff, which is not that hard. So what else is there to this weapon, Rurikan? Why is it is it that complicated? The, the biggest challenge to using the hunting horn is being able to keep tabs on the notes that you have to play while fighting a monster because while we're in the training area which is where i am right now you can basically hit the monster and be like okay i want to do triangle circle circle so you can go triangle circle circle and it's done and then you just hit perform again and you're good to go but when you are fighting a monster it's an entirely different thing particularly because as you can see after performing your character is left a, a bit in a vulnerable state in which a monster can really, really punish you. So basically, the only thing I can tell you guys about that is that this weapon is going to require much more practice than other weapons. At least, in my personal opinion, I find this weapon to be much more challenging than anything else that I've tackled before. Now, having said that, let's talk about a couple of interesting optimizations that this weapon has when it comes to the performing and doing the buffs. You can stack up three buffs at once. So you can go attack up, health boost, when pressure negated. You can basically do all those buffs in a row. So like you could go like this and then circle, then circle again. And then uh, you could go circle again to start the health boost. But the interesting thing here is the next song that you play can use the last note from the previous song. And I know, this is a little bit of a, a complicated mess to try and explain to you guys in a way that some of you guys will understand. But basically, think of it like this. Right now, what do we have on our notes played? We have triangle, circle, circle, which is attack up S. If you want to do health boost next, then you can use the last circle from the previous song that you're going to be stalking. You can use that for your next song. So for instance, if we want to use health boost, and since we already have one red note, we can go blue note, white note. And as you can see, it used up the last note and gave us instantly uh, attack up L. So right now our last note is triangle, which is the white note, which means we can combo that into defense up by going blue, blue. And that means we now have queued up the following buffs. Attack up S, health boost S, and defense up S. Now, if you notice, there are different icons on top of the three stocked buffs. You have R2, R2 plus triangle, and R2 plus circle. That is because once you start performing, your character is going to try to perform all three melodies. But naturally, you might not be able to do so because the monster might be ready to attack you, which means you might have to dodge in the middle of your performance. So, if you want to try and do the full performance anyway, you just hit R2 and it will start doing it. But if you want to start with a specific attack, like say for instance, attack up S is more important to you right now than defense up S, then you go circle R2. And it will start by the attack up S. And then it will try to play the other ones. Okay, so basically that will decide which order you will play the buffs in. I realize that this is a little bit complex, so some of you guys, if you feel that you're not understanding, rewind, watch it again, okay? Anyway, moving onward. So we've talked about buffs, we've talked about stacking three buffs at once to perform them all at once. 
Now, let's talk about uh, Encore, which is another mechanic that you have. Now, Encore is basically, let's say you have Attack Up S. Right? We have Triangle, Circle, Circle. So, you now hit the Performance button. If at the end of it, you hit R2 again, your character will do an Encore, and it will increase the effect of that buff. Now, you can do this for one buff, or you can do this for three buffs. So let's go for Attack Up. And now let's do Health Boost. And now let's do Defense. And now, let's do all three buffs. So, buff one done, buff two done, buff three done, R2. And that right there is the Encore which is going to power up every single buff that you just did, okay? So that is the Encore mechanic. And with that, it's going to enable you to buff up your party even more. Now, keep in mind, you don't have to necessarily hit the monster to get these buffs off. Any move that you make, regardless of whether or not you hit, counts as a buff move. So I just did attack up again. Okay, so whether or not you hit, if you're just trying to buff your teammates, you don't have to hit. But naturally, you want to hit, so that's why I said at the start of this video, this is a weapon that is going to require quite a bit of practice for you to master. Now, I'm going to tell you guys another important thing about this weapon, and that is there is a specific note that allows you to stack notes, which you guys might have noticed me doing uh, even though I didn't do it at the start, I started doing it halfway into the video. But that note is the circle note while moving, or the circle while standing still the second attack. So, circle has two attacks, which is this one, which is the, ver the simple one. This one does not do anything special. And then, there's this one, which as you can see, there's two moves. Now, the special thing about the two moves in circle, which is usually made whenever you are moving and you hit circle, is that you can store a note in the middle of that combo. So as you can see, we're, whenever you do circle, there's the circle note. Now, I'm going to do circle, and at the end, I'm going to press triangle, and you will see that the triangle note's going to appear in the top left-hand side. See? We didn't really do a triangle attack, but the triangle note showed up there. You can also do that for the blue note. Look at that. Now the blue note's there. Basically, it's just you press it while in the middle of that animation, and you're going to get an additional note. So this is interesting because this allows you to combo notes a little bit faster. So, for instance, let me just perform here to clear the thing. And say you want to do attack up. I can do attack up in two attacks instead of three. Triangle, circle, circle. And there it is. You, we did two circles with only two attacks. Let me clear the gauge. Get this just right to make sure that you guys can understand it. Triangle. Circle. And circle at the end. See, that was two attacks. But we got two notes. So this allows us to do buffs a little bit faster every time there is a circle note involved. So, like, for instance, say you're doing wind pressure negated, right? Let me just perform to clear the gauge. You're doing wind pressure negated, and you want to combo that straight into attack up S. You can see that wind pressure negated ends on the circle note. So, blue, blue, red, but it's going to finish on a triangle. See? Basically, this is going, like I said, this is going to require quite a bit of practice for you guys to master this. Uh, just remember that every time that you are playing a note, you want to try to be hitting the monster. And uh, if you guys are wondering which one is the, the, the move that deals the most damage in this particular thing, as far as I can tell, is if you're moving forward and you got your notes loaded and you perform, that one right there deals the most damage because it's two hits and it deals a lot of damage. That was like 70 damage off of um, off of just one move. And that's also the thing that I've noticed monsters seem to suffer the most from when I've been using it to go after Odobaron. 
Um, now, another cool thing about this particular weapon is that whenever you perform and you have the right uh, notes, it is going to send out shockwaves. So, for instance, we can do a little bit of attack guess here. Boom, boom. Now we press R2. Did you see that little black and white effect at the end? That is a shockwave which also deals impact damage and has a high chance of staggering your target. Like, I staggered the crap out of Odogaron. I like, I was really surprised. Odogaron, actually, sorry, said his name wrong. I staggered the crap out of him because of those crazy shockwaves. And the cool thing is that the Encore also comes with shockwaves. So you can go like this, then perform. And then as you are getting ready, Encore, and boom, more shockwaves, more shockwaves. You can just deal massive amounts of shockwave damage and just massive amounts of impact damage. Now, when it comes to sliding attacks with the hunting horn, it's fairly simple. It's just all about that triangle and it's going to give you an overhead smash. Uh, you can also perform from the air. Let me just get enough for a performance here. By jumping, pressing R2, and you will go straight into a performance. And you can also go into an encore if you choose to. But it's not a mounting attack. It's just you're going to land and you're going to start performing the second you land. So not a whole lot of aerial game when it comes to the hunting horn. But it is a super satisfying weapon to use, in my opinion. It is also a weapon, like I said, that is extremely unique. It is different from any other weapon in this game. And it's just super satisfying to use when you get it right. But it does require practice, practice, practice. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that each hunting horn has its own set of notes and therefore its own set of buffs. And this is something that you should take into consideration whenever you are crafting. Whereas with other weapons, you are usually just paying attention to the element or the status ailment that your weapon is going to have. And you know, stuff like affinity, damage, sharpness. When it comes to hunting horns, you also have to pay attention to the notes themselves. So if you notice right now, our great bagpipe 2 plays white, red, and deep blue. If you start pressing R2, you can go into the melody effects, and this will tell you what each of the buffs actually does for a weapon. So we got the self-improvement there, we got attack up S, health boost S, wind pressure negated, and defense up. This is for the, back, the backpipe that we currently have. Now if we move a little bit further down the line, we can go to like the Kulu Duda 3, and you'll notice that it now has the notes white, deep blue, and light blue. And if you then go into the melody effects, you're going to have different things like stamina usage reduction, still wind pressure negated, defense up, and tool use drain reduced, scout fly power up. I don't know what all of the buffs do, but what I can tell you is that there are tons and tons of buffs. Like you can see here, once again, stamina use reduction, health recovery, health recovery, and antidote. So you can even... Uh, cure your teammates from certain status ailments. You have another one here, Blooming Horn 3, also has earplugs to prevent everyone from getting staggered whenever a monster screams out. We have uh, Scott Fly Power Up, Self Improvement, and basically you guys get the idea. There's tons and tons of different buffs, so beware whenever you are crafting your hunting horns. Pay attention to the buffs that you have because you're not always going to have increased attack damage, increased defense, and increased health. Things are going to vary depending on which hunting horn you are crafting. Keep this in mind whenever you go to the smithy to craft your next tool of destruction. That's pretty much it for the hunting horn. As per usual, remember to check the comment section since the Iron Breakers are always willing to help and will be posting additional tips if we happen to have any hunting horn veterans. I'm pretty sure they will be leaving a bunch of comments in the comment section below, so check through that if you want to delve even more into the hunting horn. And uh, yeah, happy face smashing and bagpipe playing. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.